Welcome back, everybody, to Caravan of Garbage, where we're doing two Ninja Turtles movies, which came out not that long ago. Mm. Within recent memory, mm -hmm. if you can imagine such a thing. I know all our memories have been destroyed <laughs> by the last few years. Sure, 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 yeah. So maybe these, these come out a decade ago? Well, this was 2016, the year of Batman v Superman. Oh! Yeah, that's right. Well, if anything's going to obliterate your memory, it's that, isn't it? <laughs> what else was there in the year 2016? Great point. Hypercolor t-shirts, slapper bands. Rogue One. Rogue One. All of those things. <laughs> Leave a like if if you could, because we are talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, which I believe mm -hmm. would have been my favourite movie if I was eight years old. And at the time you were... I don't know, 48? <laughs> yeah, okay, so less, yeah. less enthused about this one. Look, it's got a turtle van that shoots manhole covers mm -hmm. and it swings nunchucks yes. for like, you know, 14 seconds. Bebop and Rocksteady yeah. are in it, mm -hmm. Kranger's in it, Yeah, yeah, yeah. a big weird hollow Technodrome is in it. Yeah. Where's all the rooms in the Technodrome, Mason? Well, like you get tenants and they fill in the rooms themselves. <laughs> okay. You know? yeah, okay. <laughs> they set up those like Japanese apartment walls, like the thin ones. They put those in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep, then, yep, yep. you set it up how you like. That's a great point. Yeah. I think it's definitely a better movie than the last one. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. I still don't think it's great. I don't think the nostalgia elements of it are enough for me. But there are some things in this that go beyond that. Like they build a relationship with the turtles, and there's conflict between them. <laughs> the basic tenets of storytelling. Yeah. They manage to sneak them in. They have feelings and they want things. That's right. <laughs> and they're less annoying. I feel like, though, I know the reason why they're all fighting. I don't think it's about wanting to be human or wanting to be accepted or, you know, they're not working together as a team because they're all so different. Mm. I think it's because they're hungry all the time because they ordered a pizza in this to watch the basketball. Mm -hmm. One pizza yeah. between four giant freaks. Just four enormous <laughs> furnaces. Just four <laughs> giant calorie furnaces. Yeah, one pizza, absolutely. And, and Mikey dropped one of his on the floor or whatever. God. You know? He screwed up the big basketball game. That's right. Yeah. That presumably real famous basketball Basketball player slipped over and he was like, ow, I fell on my bottom. That's right. Mm. God, embarrassing. But uh, you're right. There, I mean, the central conflict isn't really we don't work together as a team because this movie is just a series of scenes where they do work together as a team and then they slip up right at the end. And then Leonardo's like, we don't even work together as a team. Yeah. We're better being a team. We didn't fall out of that plane to catch on to the other plane and then fight a tank in a river well enough. Yeah, well, that's hard. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Not a lot yeah. of people could do that. Yeah, that's actually... You know, the fact that you got 98% of the way there is actually pretty <laughs> impressive, you know? How do you feel about Shredder in this, bearing in mind that he immediately grew a head of hair and a beard? And also, I don't know whether the fight at the end of the last movie, did that heal him? Because he's got less scars after he fell out of that fucking building uh -huh. than he did before he fell out of the building. That's a great point. Can we blame Mutagen? Yeah, we can blame mutagen. I think so, yeah. He probably fell in a face full of mutagen. <laughs> he probably did. There's probably so much mutagen in the New York wastewater. You can just dunk your face and it's... I feel like, though, with Shredder, they over-designed him in the last movie mm. and he's too big and weird and covered in spikes. And so now they've under-designed him? Yeah, he's in, like, a leather motorcycle suit and a helmet. Mm. He doesn't even really fight anybody in this. There's not even a, a hint of purple to the suit, you know what I mean? Disappointing. Which is interesting because there, there are so many nods to the classic 1980s cartoon you know and oh yeah name one other than the several we've already talked about Vern yeah Vern okay yeah that's right that's a good one Vern the Falcon mm. but yeah but they didn't go you know give, give him a purple suit I like that actor yeah and I also appreciate that the Foot Clan here aren't just guys with guns they're snake eyes guys oh yes like that's a bunch right. of snake guys that's absolutely right yeah yeah I mean Here's a question, though. Are they any better at fighting in this one than the last one? Well, there's those two that break out of the police district and they give them a bit of a runabout. That's true, yeah. But against the Ninja Turtles, probably not. No, that's true. They'd be killed. And there's that guy that just, Vern, just slams into a shipping container. His head falls off or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's so a... they're not great. No. I don't know where he's recruiting these guys. No. Well, they're teenagers. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And they're probably also learning ninjutsu from the same book that Splinter learned ninjutsu <laughs> from. And they don't have his dedication, so... No, quite frankly. You're right, yeah. So here's another addition, Mason, from the original stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Baxter Stockman, mm -hmm. as played by Tyler Perry. Baxter Stockman is a, is a good inclusion, I guess. Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry just, just doing a weird performance. <laughs> yeah. And weird you know, laugh. You know he's there because he, he wants to be there because he probably made so much money off like his Medea oh. character that he like he's just doing weird stuff because he, you know. Tyler Perry might be a billionaire. He might be a billionaire. It's, it's very possible. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I'll tell you a great addition. I love Bebop and Rocksteady in this. They have a great supportive friendship. Yep. And, and it's hashtag friend goals as far as I'm concerned. I completely agree. They mm. nail those characters uh-huh. completely. And they also make them formidable. Yes. Because in the original cartoon and mm. in other versions, you know, not as much. One time they caved in Donatello's head with like a sledgehammer. That yeah. happened or whatever. But their strength kind of gets <laughs> them through in, in battles. Yeah, in yeah, this, yeah, You know, they can be stupid, but they love each other and they're having a good time. That's true. That's yeah. lovely. When they are mixed up in that, you know, that whole skydiving from a plane to another plane and then the plane crashes and then they're falling in a river or whatever. Yeah. While the turtles, they're like, well, we didn't do, we do enough teamwork. They're like, bro, we nailed this. Yeah. We nailed falling out of a plane. <laughs> we nailed falling off, a, off the side of a waterfall or whatever. This is great. I completely agree. What a time we've had. But in addition, I don't think they nailed here. Mm-hmm. was Casey Jones. Oh, yes. It's just Stephen Amell. Sure is. And I like Stephen Amell. Uh-huh. I think he's terrific. He's a great arrow. He's a great another thing that he's in. CW, Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. <laughs> yes, he is. Where he's the spectre. Yeah, that's a great example. Mm, I think I f- so. I feel like here he's too clean uh-huh. and he's also too old. So I feel like you either got to go older and grubbier. Oh, yeah. Like Elias Cotius from the original movie. Mm-hmm. Or you go like like a teen. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's just a, a cop who's like, I'm going to be a detective. Mm. I want to be a detective. Dude, you're 38. Oh, like, you think you that's could, too late? You could be a detective. Wow. You, you're saying George Clooney got his first hit at like about the same age and you're saying this guy couldn't become a detective at 38? No, no. I'm saying that like that's a very realistic goal uh-huh. and you don't have to sook about it. Oh, yeah, that's Just, right. Like he's talking about it like one day when I'm big. It's like you are big. You're a yeah, man. You're a big man. Have you seen <laughs> Have you seen yourself do those, those chin-ups? <laughs> In our own, you see, so you can do, hardly anybody can do that. What I loved about this character is he's there when Shredder is broken out of prison, out of the prison motorcade yeah. by the Foot Clan, mm-hmm. and then he's being interviewed by the police superintendent played by Laura Linney, and she's like, okay, so you were saying there were ninjas on motorcycles? And he's like, yep. She's like, okay, go on. And he's like, and then there was a garbage truck? And she's like, oh, excuse me? A garbage truck <laughs> in New York City yeah. was somehow there at the time. You're right. He wasn't even like, and it had nunchucks. And there were big mutant turtles in it. He yeah. just says there was a garbage truck. She's like, I think we're going to put your detective exam on hold, young man. Little boy. And what's crazy about that is, like, he gets taken off the payroll. Uh-huh. And she's like, you did a bad job. He was the only one there who did anything. Mm. Everybody else, like all the other... Other men got blown up. Yeah. Are they taken off the payroll? I think their families shouldn't get pensions, Mason. Wow. Yeah. Wow. They weren't doing their job. The other guy in the car, in the van, did he die? What happened to him? That's a great question. And how many of the people in this movie, as like supporting actors or bystanders, are Ninja Turtles creators? Yeah, great. Kevin book. Eastman yeah. is in this for a second. I think he's the pizza, the pizza guy. guy yeah. He's the pizza guy. It, it's interesting that, like, I'm, whenever you see a normal looking man, yes. you're like, that's an artist or I've a creator. Seen, I've, Hollywood is too entrenched in every supporting character being played by, like, the most what? beautiful or handsome person in the world with incredible abs. Yeah. Just seeing this movie where there's just some, some people with a bit of a paunch or a bald spot, <laughs> I'm like, that guy must be a comic book writer. <laughs> No human being in Hollywood would look like that. Who let this real world person in this movie? Yuck. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, it's pretty cool at the end when he's fighting Bebop and Rocksteady and he improvs a set of rollerblades and a hockey stick. (laughs) That's right. But it's like, dude, you're Casey Jones. You should have this stuff. Right? Like, what is this? Traditionally, we'd have him on him. We'd have a big golf bag on his back. Mm. You know? But it's just a guy in a hoodie and a T-shirt and jeans. Mm. Like, this, come on. It is fascinating. I, the, that, that was maybe one of my favourite parts where he just he was just looking through some rubble and he just found a, a just an L-shaped piece of metal that would work perfectly as a hockey stick. I think that was great. My favourite part was where he duct taped some wheels from a chair, from a roller chair well, on, that's the, what it was. on the bottom of his shoes. I thought he opened a box and there was just like a series of half roller blades in there. <laughs> We're going to transport these half roller blades. We're going to get them into the city and connect them with the other half of the roller blades. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, a big part of this, though, is getting pieces together because they're Mm. collecting pieces of the teleportation device. Ah, yes. The plot. That's right. The plot is here, everybody. Everybody wave. There it is. Mason, you're not waving. Oh, hi, the plot. (laughs) You're not really relevant, but it's nice to see you. It's never relevant anymore. So one of the pieces is in a museum Mm -hmm. in a big alien rock Yeah. with a big switch on the side that nobody has ever pressed. Nobody's thought to push the switch. Maybe, it's, maybe it requires a certain finesse. Okay. You know you know these museum creators, they're all just smashing on a thing. Yeah. They're all just smashing on a button. You're like, 
Settle down, museum creators. That's right. You know, give it a little soft touch like that. Oh, it's opened <laughs> up and now it's, there's a, 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 a scepter or something in there or whatever. Crank's in this. Yeah. And he's very Brad Garrett and he's very wet. Absolutely. Some real good wet CGI yeah, yeah. on this guy. Traditionally, when you think of Brad Garrett, you think of a very dry surface area, don't you? Mm. They've, they've moistened maybe not, him up. Maybe not the hair. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, yeah. no, you're right. They, yeah. They've moistened him right up. You know? It's the wettest he's ever been. To the point of absurdity, I think. I feel like they had to make Krang massively oversized just in himself mm. because the turtles are so big. Yes. Because uh-huh. he's normally like the size of like an ice cream container. Absolutely. <laughs> For, for taking him to school in, as, as part of show and tell. <laughs> yeah, brought a Krang. Yeah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> well, he's not cool. He's pretty rude. <laughs> but he is from Demented X. <laughs> you, bore, you brought him last week. Boo. <laughs> Bring something else. Boo. <laughs> but that's fun. I wish the, the, the robot suit he is in was, like, more fleshy. for Yeah, whatever. okay. You know. More like the... More like the cartoon. I wish that he had more interactions with Shredder because some of my favourite stuff in that original cartoon mm. is just them bumbling about. Yeah, I kind of liked their their dynamic in this. Yeah. That Shredder's being teleported away, he assumes, to safety, and then he's just on Krang's ship, and Krang's like, <laughs> and Shredder's like, oh, and Krang's like, Mwah! I'm like, touching you, I'm going to lick you. Right? What do you think? You'll Ugh. be as wet as I am. Oh, don't, stop. Yeah. Ugh, no. And that could have been, that could have developed into something. That could have been the whole movie. Could have been the entire movie. <laughs> Let's get drive through. Oh, you know, <laughs> just them doing stuff, just having a day together. But um, yeah, and it could have developed into something, but then Shredder just gets frozen and put yep. in a trophy case or whatever. Yep, that's right. I guess with the assumption there'd be a Ninja Turtles 3 in this and they'd be back as a team, yeah, probably. You're right. Mm. And we will talk about that, Mason. Mm. Let's also talk about acceptance. Okay. You know? Because the Turtles, they're, they're trying to accept themselves and have everybody else accept them. Be more like Bebop and Rocksteady. Exactly. Be accepting. There's a moment where all the police pull their guns on them. They're like, mm. freeze! And the Turtles are like, oh no! Mm. Have you forgotten your bulletproof? That Just turn around. Yeah. That you, bu- you're def- you don't have to turn around. Yeah, you might be bulletproof on the front as no, well. No, they are. Oh, they are. Okay, <laughs> Definitely great. are, yeah. All right. That's absolutely fine. But I'll tell you this. Mm-hmm. There was a moment huh. when I felt a genuine emotion in this movie. Whoa. And that's never happened to me before, ever. Are you sure it wasn't a fart building up? Because <laughs> you'd been sitting for too long. <laughs> so there's a moment where they're like, oh, look at these monsters, look at these freaks. And you see Michelangelo, and he's just really sad. Mm. And I'm like, that's really impressive. And initially you thought, oh, maybe he's got a fart building up. <laughs> but then you realised it was because he actually was sad. Yeah, that's right. Mm. He also may have had a fart building Might up. Might have. You can have, two, you can have two emotions at once. Yeah, but like the design of that and the eyes and just the look on his face. The texturing the of the turtles is way better in yeah. this. The colouring's better as well. They yeah. brighten them up just, just a little bit. There's less kibble. There's still probably too much kibble. They're still kibbling, mm. but yeah. And I think also you get more emotion out of them in this. And I realise what I don't like about Splinter in this. Okay. He's got black eyes. Oh. And it's just like, no. Mm. I can't read his emotions and he's a big rat. He's a big rat. So, like, I don't want to just get that away from me. Yeah. Weird, long, fleshy tail. See, I think they they absolutely minimised it in this movie. I think they were like, people are not responding well to the big wet rat. So, (laughs) they want a big wet brain. He's not in it much, is he? The the, the wet rat. But, Mm. yeah. Man, I tell you what, though. Brave of this movie to have an ending where a portal opens in the sky above New York a mere four years after the Avengers did it. Absolutely. And it's blue. (laughs) And it's blue. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think also you end it with the turtles up in a really high place above New York fighting a bad guy in a mech suit. Mm. It's like, I recall this because it happened in the previous movie. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe it could have come up from the earth. The Technodrome's often in the earth. Sometimes it's in the earth. It comes up and it goes, mm. I'm a, I've got a big eye on me. That's right. You know? Should we do some uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the trivia shadows? Yes. Should we do it now? Oh, let's do it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we wave? At the trivia? Yeah. Our trivia's here all the time. I think you take trivia for granted, Mason. Oh, yes. It's not always going to be here. It's always going to be here. One week I might forget. Okay. But not this week. No. So Alan Richson, who we talked about last week, mm. who voices and is the body and mocap of Raphael, and we got into how it was a very unhappy experience making the first movie. He had to come back and do this one because he was bound to the contract. I see. So that's good. So again, paid very little. Awful conditions. Right. But at least he didn't have to do a third one. That's true. But yeah. I reckon he did a bang up job. He did. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't listen to those line readings and go, "This guy didn't want to be here." If there's even a chance that Ooze can make us human. Yeah. And 
And as about this, Pete Plozek, uh, he provided now the motion capture and voice for Leonardo after Johnny Knoxville wasn't asked to return for unknown reasons. I think he's a really good Leonardo in this. I agree. I think that voice... Sensei, the Foot Clan are attempting to bring Shredder out of custody. What's happening out there, Donnie? It's your call. Suits the character mm -hmm. better. And I don't know whether it is the pairing of the mocap with the voice, but... This to me feels more like a like a leader Leonardo mm. than the previous one. They probably didn't ask Johnny Knoxville back because he he read the script and he's like, oh, so I get to jump out of a plane onto another plane and then the, I crash the plane and then I send it down the side of a waterfall. Let's go! <laughs> and, you, and they're like, no, Johnny, 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 please no, Jonathan, Jonathan Knox, Knoxville, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. Uh, the producer tried to get cameo roles from TMNT 1990 actors, including Elias Cotius, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who was, of course, a former Casey Jones, and Sam Rockwell as a Foot Clan member. Oh, yeah, that's right, because he's one of the teens. A very young Sam Rockwell. Mm. However, both of them declined to appear. And what about this? When Krang puts Shredder's frozen body in the lower levels of the Technodrome, on his left and right are frozen alien beings from the TMNT saga. Oh. We've got a Triceratops-like alien known as a Triceraton, and also a Neutrino on the other side. And you recognise some of those, maybe. I do recognise at least one of those. Do you recognise the idea that this studio wanted to make a third movie? Do you recognise that? I would be willing to recognise that okay. in a court of law, yes. Great, good, good. Which this is? Yes, These are is. all in a court. We record all these in a court of law. Correct. Yeah. we well, got to get them right. Mm. By law. That's right. So all of the actors in these movies... The Turtles, Megan Fox, Will Arnett, all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, they were signed on for three movies. Okay. And Tyler Perry even said in an interview that he would probably turn into a fly during that third movie. Nice. Presumably within the movie. Uh, okay, not just as a trick to entertain the cast and crew <laughs> <laughs> behind the scenes. That's right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, guys. <laughs> oh, wait, it was just a fart. But the box office for this on a budget of $135 million, which I think, you know, this gets a lot of bang for its buck, mm -hmm, you know, yeah. it came away with $245.6 million, okay. which is a massive decrease on the previous one. Yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, that sounds like more, but when you factor in marketing costs, as yeah. we do, broke even, maybe? Maybe. Probably not, though. So producer Andrew Form, he spoke to Collider at the time and he said, We were obviously surprised at the box office results. We loved the movie. We loved making the movie. From our first Super Bowl teaser to everything we launched, we felt so good about our material and for some reason it did not find the audience that the first movie found. And we talked about it at the time and we tried to figure it out, but we cannot put our finger on what happened. We really can't. Was this just the wrong time? Look, it's not great also. It wasn't received super well. Mm. Again, it's better than the first one. Uh -huh. Was this just an era where, like, Marvel and DC were dominating? Do you think that was could a have, factor? Could be a, but, I mean, it also just might be, you know, we have fond memories of the cartoon, and that, and this has lot, lots of nods to that. Yeah. But little kids don't. No. And that's the, the would be the primary audience for this, right? They'd that's be true. like, oh, there's a big brain guy. Yuck. Yeah, yuck. <laughs> oh, there's a weird rat with black eyes. Yuck. <laughs> I hated that last time when I was afraid and I had nightmares. I don't like this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this this feels, you know, I had fun with this one, but I feel like it. a lot of it is nostalgia bait for people who aren't seeing these kind of movies anymore, really. Yeah, you're not wrong. Mm. Wow. But you know what? What? One of my favourite Ninja Turtles movies is the best one from 1990. Oh, yes. Do you know, where, do you know listen to this. Okay. You might know this. I might. That me and you have done a movie commentary on top of that movie. That's right. And that is available at bigsandwich.co, where we've got dozens of movie commentaries up That's there. That's right. Plus, these videos go up there early every week, don't they, Mason? Yes, they do, and I love that. And here's a hint towards next week's episode, by the way. What matters is who has power. And in addition to that, we've got video game Let's Plays. That's right. We play the Ninja Turtle Arcade on there. When I say on there, this is all at bigsandwich.co, which is like our private Patreon service. Where all the things mentioned. It's all paywalled, isn't it, Mason? Now, people love paywalls. You have to you have to pay some money. Some money, but it's not a lot of money. Or maybe you're interested in our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we're talking movies and comics and TV shows. It's got its own YouTube channel, Spotify. Uh, it's everywhere as well. TikTok? You know? it's, got, it's on TikTok, yes. It's on TikTok there's somehow. A, well, there's a Weekly Planet Clips channel. Where people who remember the original Ninja Turtles cartoon and were also on TikTok. That's can right. Can you imagine? What an era. I don't run it, but I can imagine mm, it, Mason. That's right. All right, thanks, everyone. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.